Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Silent Voices. We hope that this presentation today will be helpful to you in understanding the agony that many parents face in dealing with the various systems within our society. We encourage you to watch and to respond to the show with your comments. The email addresses will be listed at the end of the show. I'm Carol Kramer, and as many of you know, I'm a retired therapist who is attempting to use my skills and credentials as a Michigan licensed clinical social worker, marriage and family counselor, and also as an experienced elementary teacher to help people in their attempts to right some wrongs within our various aspects of society, albeit the county and the state systems. Today, we have as our guest the mother of John and Nancy. They have previously asked to share on this show their experiences of abuse from their stepfather, their ex-stepfather. They were able to come to the studio here and share their positive relationships also that they've had with their mother. Now, we have mom today on the show, but to conceal her identity, I'm going to call her mom. Mom, I've known you for many years. I've been a witness to some of the many things that you have gone through in your fight to protect your children. I've continued to encourage and support your many efforts to have your children return to you. I personally have seen how hard you have worked to fight the Department of Human Services and the courts on behalf of your children. I realize that part of your grief and loss issues have resulted from the interference that has been run to keep you from seeing the children that you love on a regular basis. Ladies and gentlemen, this mom is here to share her experiences with the Department of Human Services, also known as the DHS her experiences with Bethany Christian Services, her experiences with the judicial courts, and her experiences also with the judge, in this case, Patricia Garden. I will ask you to start, Mom, where you feel comfortable, and take your time so that the viewers can understand the impact of what you went through, what your children went through, and, and then possibly relate it to what many of them have experienced as well. Go ahead, Mom, start where you're comfortable. Um, I would like to start with the, um, the weekend that Annie was severely abused by her father, and uh, it was witnessed by her two siblings. Um, after Annie's disclosure and taking my daughter to the Child Children's Assessment Center, where she was examined, pictures were taken. Uh, we were sent home and told to wait for Child Protective Services to call us, call myself. Um, I had waited over a week and had to contact them myself. Um, I had talked to one or two different people. Um, one attempt uh, call that I had gotten through in the person at Child Protective Services had told me that they would not come out to the home uh, because the father who was accused of the sexual abuse or my, who my daughter had disclosed about was going to take a polygraph test and he informed me that if he took the polygraph test he would not come out to the home if he passed it and if he did not pass the polygraph test then they would come out to the home and talk with the children and myself in regards to the disclosure of abuse of Annie. Uh, a week went by and I did not hear anything. Um, I made angry phone calls, left angry messages. 
Uh, a week later, I did have a person show up at the home, came into the home. I showed them the mattress, um, the spot of blood where my daughter laid. You could tell where um, Dad had wiped the blood off the mattress. Um, this person from Child Protective Services didn't spend maybe 15 minutes of the home, did not talk with the children, and left. Excuse me, did they ask you for any other kind of documentation? Is this just what you showed them on your own? You just thought this would be a good thing to show them? Yes, they did not ask for any other, any other inf information. This was all what I gave, showed myself. I understand that she was cut with a knife in her genitalia. Now, where was that knife and what happened to that? Uh, six months later, um, I was sitting in the um, an office at, the, at our uh, computer, and um, both Amelia, Abby, and Adam had been outside playing and came running into the house with a knife and handed the knife to me, told me that this was the knife that Dad used on Abby. I think it was Adam. It was John that handed me the knife. Um, I ended up calling the um, detective that was supposed to be in charge of the case and explained that, I, that they had given this to me, presented it to me. Um, I did take it down to the police station. I did sit and speak with the detective, left the knife with him along with other um, bloody underwear, a sheet with blood on it, and left that with the detective at the uh, police station. So they took those items. Did they give you a receipt for them? No, they did not. Okay. No, I never received anything back. Um, I did go down a couple months later and retrieve the underwear and the sheets, and uh, the knife was not with the other stuff that they gave me that was they had put into a box. Okay. So the, the knife went missing. So to review this, uh, when you were aware of the incident, you immediately took the children down and you had them examined and then you called the Department of Social Services, Child Protection, but they never came out saying that they would wait until the um, children's father passed a lie detector test or did not and then they would decide to come out and you didn't hear from them. Am I understanding that yes, correctly? Yes, th that is correct. And all this time, you're dealing with kids that are pretty upset about what has gone on and what did they do, ask you? What's gonna happen now? Um, no, I was assigned a uh, court-appointed attorney, Mary Benedict, to represent myself um, with the kids. She was supposed to rep be and working on the children's behalf, not myself, but for the children. Um, when Amy um, disclosed that I had asked her where she was when Dad hurt Annie, uh, she told me that she was in the room herself and that um, explained, told me everything that happened. And um, I got on the phone with Mary Benedict um, within 15 minutes after the conversation with Amy um, and Mary Benedict yelled at me and told me that I had no right to discuss the um, what happened with my daughter with any of my children and that I should stop. Um, I argued with her, disagreed with her, I fought with her and a week later she dropped, withdrew as my attorney. So she was giving you advice that you were not supposed to talk with your children about a trauma that all three of them had been involved in. Yes, that is correct. Uh, tell me, is Mary Benedict, is she a licensed therapist? <laughs> no, she is not. Um, has she had experience in the schools with children? No, she has not. Uh, is she a marriage and family therapist? No, she is not. And yet she was giving you advice that these children should not talk about 
the um, trauma that had just happened. Is that correct? And that is correct. It kind of makes me wonder why the schools, any school in the state has a trauma and you'll always hear them. The, the counselors will be at the school to talk with the children about what has happened. And yet in your case, with your own children, you were not allowed to talk about it. Yes, I found that very interesting. I do too. Okay. Very interesting. Share some more, please. I appreciate hearing this. Uh, so it was two years later, still fighting the system and wondering why, whichever avenue that I went, um, constant trips to Child Protective Services with videos of the kids um, and therapy with Mary Kirkwood, Dis, uh, their disclosure of abuse to Mary, uh, we videotaped, they watched it, um, made all kinds of excuses, that tape disappeared. Um, taking the kids down to the Children's Assessment Center for therapy also for a six week period. Um, the children openly discussing the abuse with the people at the Ch Children's Assessment Center. To no avail, nothing is being done, nothing is happening. And then uh, two years from the time of that weekend of abuse, um, Child Protective Services, not Protective Services, but two cops showed up the door and uh, physically took the children from me because they stated that they had a call. Uh, wouldn't tell me who they had the call from. They had no warrants, no papers, just two, two sheriffs, two cars, we're here for the kids. Don't make it any harder than it is. Uh, the kids will be gone for 24 hours. Um, I tried to fight. I would come forward to prevent them. They did forcibly come into the home. And when I went move towards the children, one cop would stand in front of, forcibly stand in front of me to keep me away from the children. And the other cop would, um, did guide them to ask them to get their favorite toys or blanket or animals. And, uh, I walked the children into the car. Um, we were all crying and told them I would do whatever it took to get them back. Let me understand this. I'm not a legal person, but I was under the impression that policemen were not allowed to enter your house without a search warrant. And if I understand you correctly, that's what they did? That is correct, yes. It that was must illegal. have been very frightening to you and the children. Extremely. And they gave you no paperwork whatsoever, not even a business card. That is correct. Wow. And they never told you why they were removing the children. No, they did not. They gave no reason. Just that they had a call. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. Go on. Tell me some more, please, so we can share this with the audience. From that point on, I understand the kids went into foster care for a week. In that week's time, there was a hearing for custody with all three children in front of Patricia Gardner. The hearing that um, was the deciding hearing on what, who the kids would go to, who would get full custody, was not, uh, there was no transcriptionist, there was, it was not taped. Um, I found out later that this also was not right, it was illegal, and that should not, that hearing should not have been handled that way. But all three children were, uh, full custody was given to the fathers. So on short notice, there was a hearing held, and where was this healing, hearing? Uh, it was in family court. In family court. And before what judge did you say? Patricia Gardner. Who told you that was illegal? I know nothing about these things. Explain that to me. My attorney that represented me at the time, Joe Gillard. Mm -hmm. And he said that was illegal, but apparently it didn't make any difference. Oh, no. Mm -mm. They just took the children. No. Was your attorney there at the time? Yes, he was. And based on what had you done wrong, why these children were removed? I'm not sure I'm clear on this. Um, the reasons that the children were removed was they uh, had missed too many days of school. Um, that I told them that their father lied. Um, 
just really ridiculous reasons, not reasons of, neg of abuse or neglect. Um, right. My son missed school due to strep throat and having his tonsils out. Mm -hmm. My daughter missed school due to suffering a severe head injury and didn't start school until late. And they used all of the, this, these incidences against me. Was she in an accident? Turn. Pardon me, was she in an accident? An yes, auto she accident? was. Okay, so it wasn't just one day she had a head, in, head injury. No, in I fact, the day, the day we had the, the uh, accident was the day that Adam had disclosed mm -hmm. with yourself and the detective that mm -hmm. he had been abused by this man mm -hmm. also. By his stepfather? Yes. I see. And I understand also that when you check the, with the physicians, the pediatricians, that both of his pediatricians um, had written notes about the children and their suspected uh, sexual abuse and that John had disclosed uh, directly to one of the pediatricians exactly what his stepfather did. Um, yes, yes, and uh, one of the letters that, um, one letter was sent to Patricia Gardner by mail, one letter was given to me by the pediatrician, which I took to a motion that I had to appear to in court um, before they uh, had the hearing to take the kids away, take custody away. I handed this letter to Patricia Gardner, stating that this was a letter written by the pediatrician in his concerns, and she took the letter and just set it off to the side. Okay, I somehow here, I still have some confusion. The children are reported that Annie was sexually abused. Yes. With cut with a knife. Yes. She reported it. Yes. And her sister, Amy, and her brother, John, witnessed it. You took them to the Children's Assessment Center they took pictures and made, com made their notes. Did the social worker at the Children's Assessment Center uh, talk with the children? Yes. Did she say anything to them about their, the father, stepfather? I believe a comment was made about him being not a good father and what he does, did was wrong. Okay. And so she was free to say that as a therapist, if that's what she believed. Were you ever accused of saying that? Yes, I was. I was the one that was, I was accused as being the one to have made that comment to my children. Yet you still have notes, you have evidence, notes, that it was indeed from the comment was made from the social worker at the Children's Assessment Center. That is true. Wow, so here we have all of these comments. The father is accused by the children. They had the phys some physical evidence. You tried to give them more. And for some reason, other than you being accused of saying he was not a, he was a bad man or not a good man, which you say you didn't say, you have evidence that the a social worker said that. I don't understand why the children were removed from you. To this day, I don't understand. Okay. And after, after they were removed from my custody, I could only have supervised visits. How did that go? Annie? One of the visits, Annie wanted to write her own story, so I took her into the computer room, gave her paper, and she actually own, wrote out her own story of what Dad did. I'm sorry I was going to bring that picture so you could actually see her handwriting, and I was going to read it. Um, John also did the same thing. I took it to the school, Catholic school. Um, that's what Annie had asked me to do. The school what was aware of what was going on. I openly went to the Catholic school and discussed the abuse and how the courts were handling it and how the kids were not being protected. Um, I had put these letters on the car windows, about 25 of them. Um, the father, the perpetrator, took these letters um, to 
the head of the uh, woman at the head of the church, also the police department, um, put a motion into court and uh, made statements that what I had just done was the utmost unfit thing that a mother could do to her children. So I went from five hours of unsupervised visits to four years of supervised visits of seeing my children for one hour every other week for four hours and also paying fifty dollars for my visits through Bethany Christian Services. Well let me understand this. Who was the person that said that was so harmful? Uh, was this a child psychologist? Was this a psychiatrist? No, they, Was they, this a family therapist? What kind of credentials did these people have to make this statement? Any one of them? They didn't. They took this letter back and um, hauled Child Protective Services back in. She wrote a report stating that I made them write this letter themselves, that it was not their handwriting, that this was all something that I had done and nothing to do with the children that they had done on their own. So it was twisted around. Even though, which is very interesting, because certainly uh, many of our viewers will know that I was a school social worker in the Grand Rapids Public Schools uh, for, for about 18 years. And of course we let children, we encourage them to write any trauma that has happened and to write about anything they need to. It's a part of a therapy. And so I find that is very interesting. So it wasn't that they wrote it, it's, what, it's because someone there, you're not sure who, uh, had the idea that it was wrong to write it or it was wrong that you uh, gave those out to people. This is all the doings of the perpetrator, dad, doing whatever he can to keep himself from being exposed. Now, when these children were busy visiting you, where were they living the rest of the time? They were with dad. They were with the father. And the whom, grandmother. And his mother, whom they had actually reported the father all witnessing the, the sexual cutting. Yes. I would, now as a therapist myself, I would think that would be um, very abusive and neglectful to leave the children in that setting, but that's my personal opinion. But that's how I would feel. Now, <clears throat> who, what kind of attorney, was, was this like a divorce attorney that was supporting your, their father? Actually, I had filed for a divorce after the dis disclosure of abuse, but he found out about it and had hired a criminal attorney. And the criminal attorney is who he has to this day representing him, who did his part of the divorce and has been handling this case since day one. He's a criminal attorney. That's very interesting. Yes. I guess one of my questions would be, if you're going to get a divorce, why you would hire a criminal attorney? But as I continue to state, I don't know the law. I think if I were going to get a divorce, I'd hire a divorce attorney. But maybe it had to do with some criminal matters, which is why I don't know that. Okay, uh, we don't have much time left, about five minutes. Is there anything else that you would, can share today with us? The corruptions of DHS, Bethany Christian Services, the courts, Judge Gardner, guardian ad litems, appointed, appointed attorneys, they all have each other's back. They don't mm -hmm. care about the children. It's who has the most money wins. Um, there is no law. It's not about law, truth, or, and justice. Mm -hmm. It's 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 unbelievable and it, nine years later um, my, I have my son back praise the Lord but I've not seen my daughters in over three years and you haven't seen your daughters because of all the different 
interferences Beth that Bethany keeps... Bethany Christian Services said three years ago that there was no reason to have supervised visits any longer. So they dropped the supervised visits, but then refused to re write a letter of a recommendation stating that there was no need for me to be supervised with my children any longer. So I have been back to court in front of Patricia Gardner numerous times, uh, repping myself as a, or as a pro se litigant to, to get my girls back. I've been expunged from the central registry twice without a hearing. I have abided to all the rules that the court and Judge Gardner have, has asked me to do. And time and time again, I stand in front of her and she refuses for me to see my daughters and have any type of visitation. You so, know, it isn't just about you not seeing your children, which is a loss. I'm even more concerned about, in my opinion, it would sound that the victims of this whole thing, your children, are being re-victimized by not seeing their mother. That's my opinion. And that's a very sad thing. Definitely. I wanna, right. I want to thank you. Uh, I know our time is short. What I'm hoping is that out there, there are people watching that can relate, that might be able to help, and that would be available uh, to, to send, spend time, money, whatever. And so I would like to thank you out there in TV land for watching. Please remember that your voice does not have to be silent. You can make a difference. If you have comments or questions, or if you would like the opportunity to be a guest on the show, please email us at M I parent parental rights, M I parental rights at gmail.com. We also have a social network you can visit at M I parental rights dot ning, N I N G dot com. So, in closing, Mom, I'd like to thank you so much. I know it's been very difficult for you to come here and share. And yet I know that your voice cannot be silent because not only are you speaking for yourself and your children, but many of the other people out there who have gone through so much that you have experienced as well. So I want to thank our audience. I want to thank you. I'd like to thank the volunteers that are all here to make this program possible. Thank you so much. Most importantly, again, thank you, our audience, and we'll look forward to seeing you very soon.